There's McTominay now on the attack. I see Lucas Digne making a great run. There goes Lucas Digne. What a chance it is for the Frenchman. Goes for goal. And Lucas Digne actually scores a big goal for us in the Premier League. Especially against Arsenal. Bruno though turns, shoots. He's going to get his hat-trick. He is. It's absolutely wonderful from Bruno Fernandes. Three stunning goals in the second half. So it's a new day and it's time for another episode of the Manchester United Career Mode Series. This is episode number 11. We are on transfer deadline day at the moment. 10 hours to go for the window to shut. Anything can possibly happen. Maybe Pogba will be sold. You never know. Maybe we sign Fede Valverde. So anything can happen on transfer deadline day. We've also got a couple of big Premier League games in this one. Chelsea, who are actually very close to us in the Premier League standing. So that's going to be a big game. And Wolves as well, who are always a tricky team to face. The BTEC Champions League returns for today's episode as Man United are up against Basel. First leg away. So we've got the deadline day today. We've got big games against Chelsea in the Prem and Europa League action. Should be a cracking episode. And if you guys are enjoying this series... Let's keep the support coming and the support so far in this series has been nothing short of incredible so let's keep it going. 2500 likes again would be absolutely class and if you are new around here subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content. Time to start off the episode with a press conference as always if you guys want to see your questions being answered drop them down in the comment section below. First question, seeing the Dean Henderson save, I think that should be a save of the season as well as a goal of the season. So for those wondering what he's on about, every career mode we do on this channel, at the end of the season we have like an end of season awards ceremony. And we do have a few categories like goal of the season, player of the series and all that sort of stuff. So, you know what, you're actually right. We should have something like save of the season. And it's not just going to be for goalkeepers that what we're going to have. We're going to actually have like... Save of the season will include stuff like a, maybe a best clearance, a goal line clearance or something like that. So we're going to treat it more of like a best defensive moment award. I think that's where the defenders also get a chance to shine. So yes, end of season, we're going to have some sort of an award that's going to, you know, give a lot of credit to our goalkeepers and defenders. Next question, for how many seasons do you want to do the Man United career mode series? I've been getting a lot of comments like this. People just want to know. How much more of the United career mode is there going to be? So I can tell this for now. I'll just basically confirm it. Three seasons at the very minimum with Manchester United. After that, it just literally depends on what you guys want. If you guys want to see this career mode more often or not. So for now, I can confirm this. Three seasons with Manchester United is on the table. After that, we'll see. Next question. Why don't you sign Sal from Atletico? He already has a legendary status at Old Trafford because of that goal against Liverpool. We all know that goal against Liverpool, man. In the Champions League at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium. Sal's goal, man. It was lovely to see. I enjoyed that as well. But the thing with Saul is he would be a fantastic transfer if we did decide to sell Paul Pogba if an offer came in. But the thing with this is I actually made this signing in my FIFA 19 career mode. And I want to kind of keep this series fresh and not make the same signings over and over again. And that's why Saul to Manchester United is not going to be happening in this one. He's a fantastic midfielder, don't get me wrong. He would have been a fabulous replacement for Pogba if we did decide to sell him. But... Since I don't want to sign the same players again, this is not going to happen. But with that, we've wrapped up today's press conference. Let's move on. It's back-to-back -back player of the episode awards for Bruno Fernandes and this time he did deserve it. He scored a hat-trick in the Carabao Cup semi-finals to get us to the final against Arsenal of all teams. And the quality of those three goals was just simply astonishing. And no wonder you guys voted for him as your player of the episode. Alright guys, let's now get through transfer deadline day and see what's up. If any offers come in for Pogba or not, it's definitely going to be interesting. Also looking at the top deals in this window, he means the Man City, so one of our rivals are definitely strengthening. Busquets the Juventus is a big move, but of course the biggest transfer of this window so far is Marquinhos to Manchester United. Am I seeing things or did Arsenal actually sign Gareth Bale for 34.5 million? You know what? That in my opinion is a bargain. Gareth Bale for that fee? That's actually nuts. Yo, gotta give props to Arsenal for making this deal happen. I know he's 30 years old but he's 84 rated which is pretty high and he's valued at 29.5 so for Arsenal to get him for that fee, it's actually incredible. But it is funny seeing Bale at Arsenal 
instead of Tottenham. So that's a bit of a weird one. I'm sure Arsenal fans would love to see this happen. But yeah, it's a bit hilarious. But at the same time, it's some quality business from Arsenal. And so with that, the transfer window has shut. We had no offers coming in for Paul Pogba or for any player for that matter. So, well, we keep our team as is, which is, I guess, brilliant. We did see a few interesting transfers like Gareth Bale to Arsenal, but... Yeah, apart from that, business as usual, Paul Pogba stays at Man United. This is the team we've got for the rest of the season and honestly, I'm pretty content with it, especially our backline which looks amazing. Our midfield looks solid as well, we've got a great attack with a lot of pace. I mean, this side does look incredible and I've got big expectations from them for the rest of the season. We've got great backup options, a good bunch of youngsters as well. I'm excited, man, to continue this series because I feel like we've really built a quality side. Here's a quick look at our season goals before we make any sort of progress. Dan James got an assist in the last episode. We need him to keep that form up, continue getting assists if we want to complete the challenge. And also, we've got to start working towards the Class of 2020 challenge. So I'm going to maybe promote a few youngsters in the next few episodes or so. Bruno getting more assists is going to be vital. More goals from Rashford would be brilliant as well. All the transfer stuff, we can now put that behind. It is now time to focus on what's important, the Premier League. We've got a big game ahead against Wolves, who are seventh in the league, so we know they're going to give us a tough fight. We've got to keep winning to keep our spot in the top four intact. And after this, we've got a big game against Chelsea. So it's a massive episode for us in the Premier League. Let's get right into it. This is how I've got the team set up against Wolves. A big night for Awad, who plays instead of Paul Pogba, who, by the way, has picked up an injury for the next three weeks or so. So it's, you know, Awad's moment to shine. We've got Sancho, Bruno, Rashford all starting. It's a strong Man United setup. Let's go out there, beat Wolves, and pick up a huge win in the Premier League. Here we go, early chance against Wolves, Bruno, who's on really good form lately, finds Marcus Rashford, could be our first goal of the game, and I'm so glad to see Marcus Rashford back on the score sheet. If you've noticed lately, he's kind of been missing a ton of chances for us, but now he's finally getting that goal-scoring instinct back, and I'm hoping he can continue that. A brilliant assist for Bruno Fernandes, who's been in fantastic form lately, a hat-trick against Arsenal, and he's already picked up an assist. I'm so glad we've taken the lead here against Wolves because they're always such a tricky side to face. So getting the advantage as early as possible is huge. As Marcus Rashford scores his 17th Premier League goal of the season. Here goes Rashford on the attack. He's on for his second goal of the day as Marcus Rashford is in the form of his life suddenly. I mean, under 20 minutes and he scored two fantastic goals. This one was even better than the first. The first one was more of a proper finisher, a proper striker, but this time he dribbled past a few players, tricked a few defenders and then slotted this one right home. Marcus Rashford with a second goal of the day for him. I mean, look at that for the finish as well. Lovely stuff from Marcus and with that, Manchester United have a 2-0 advantage against Wolves. Let's keep going at it. Scott McSominay looks inside for Bruno. A lovely pass into Rashford's spot. Can Rashford get his hat-trick in the first half itself? He goes for goal. It's a brilliant clearance. And on the rebound, Patricio saves it. I would love to see Rashford get himself a hat-trick. Would be huge for the series. Rashford looking to link up with Jadon Sancho. Sancho as well. Releases this for Awad. Has to be a goal. And it is first half. Manchester United lead 3-0 against Wolves. Couldn't have asked for a better start. I mean, Wolves are always a team that causes problems. But this time around, we've dismantled them in the first half. Which is amazing to see. 3-0. We're dominating every aspect of the game. We've been great defensively. Marquinhos and Maguire haven't let anything slide past them and well, offensively the attackers and even now War are getting the job done. Let's keep at it. Raul Jimenez on the ball goes inside for Wolves. Ruben Neves trying an audacious flick up. Thankfully we blocked that. Marquinhos again has been solid defensively for us. I'm so glad we invested in our defence first and then moving forward because having a good defence man just makes life easier. Once again, Ruben trying to get past Marquinhos, but there's no way it's possible. He's been so good for us at the back. Anthony Martial on the attack now, looking to go for goal, and Martial gets in on the action. I'm happy he's actually scored because he's kind of not been getting involved. I mean, there was an episode where he was like scoring freely, getting a few assists, but since then, kind of dropped off a bit. So I'm happy he scored now. Hopefully he can, you know, get on a good run of scoring. And look at this, guys. Bruno again with the assist ever since that hat-trick. Things have been going really well for him, but what a finish from Anthony Martial. We've got to give him credit for that. I mean, that was just lovely. Look at the curl on that. We are leading 4-0. It only makes sense to make some changes. So what I'm going to do is bring on Igalo for Martial. We'll play Rashford on the left. Also, let's bring on Jack Grealish for Bruno. 
And let's bring on Dan James for Sancho. And that's full time. We don't really see much from the substitutes as they barely got an opportunity to do anything. But ultimately, job well done. A convincing performance, especially before that Chelsea game. Just what we needed. Rashford was superb, scoring a brace. Martial got on the action. Awar was brilliant in Pogba's absence. Everything went just perfectly. So I'll take that. Three points in the bag. An interesting press conference question, can the team manage without Pogba on the long run? To be fair, it's not really a long run, it's just like maybe a couple more games that we've got to manage without Pogba, but I'm just going to say plenty of options. I mean, we don't really need to diss Pogba by selecting one of the other options, so we'll just play it safe. The state of our academy is actually pretty terrible right now. I mean, if you look at this, guys, not a single player has a max potential of maybe 94. Lewis Davies is decent, 80 to 90 is potentialist, but... It's, it's not looking that good. I'd really like to see players with like a max of 94 potential because their ceiling is basically unlimited. But ah, this, this is not a good case. If we want to try and complete some of those objectives, we really need to step things up with our academy. And that's why I'm actually going to hire another scout. Let's, let's maybe bring in Oliver Matson. Let's do that. Let's bring him in. He's going to be our new scout. And I'm gonna send him to... You know what? I'll leave that up to you guys. Let me know in the comments section where should we send our next youth scout. We've got to step things up, man. Otherwise, we won't be able to complete one of our youth, uh, season goals. It's the FA Cup replay game against Charlton. And this time, we do get the win. Of course, I used my second team. Dan James getting a goal. Greenwood scoring as well. Perfect. We're through to the next round. Have a look at this, guys. Rashford seems to be happy with all the football he's been getting. I mean, he's repaying it with goals to us so i'm i'm cool with it let's let's keep playing him let's hope he can keep scoring as well our next game in the premier league is a trip to stamford bridge and look at the situation in the premier league right now just one point separates us and chelsea also spurs have dropped points which means a win here for us will put us three points clear of them and wow we'll be four points clear of chelsea that'll put us in a great spot for securing champions league football so this is massive. A game that could potentially land us in the Champions League next season. We lose here. All our momentum goes away. We drop to fifth. So this is massive in the Premier League. Will we see more of Awar? I'm just going to say switching tactics. But he's going to start this game. There's no option of saying like Awar will start. But yeah, he's going to start this next game. Pogba is still out injured. It's time for Awar to shine. He was superb in the last game. I'm hoping for the same. Correct me if I'm wrong, but our first game of the season was against Chelsea and we beat them 2-0 at Old Trafford. I'm hoping for a similar outcome in this one. Of course, it's going to be a lot harder. It's at the Stamford Bridge, but our team is a lot stronger. We've got Marquinhos at the back, a new defensive signing that's done wonders for us. Bruno is in great form. We've got Rashford up top, back scoring goals. Sancho, I'm ready for this game, man. Let's try and beat Chelsea in their own backyard. Ooh, Chelsea have a lot of pace up top. Iñaki, Williams, Pulisic, Neres. I mean, they're super quick. It's going to be a big test for Maguire and Marquinhos, who've so far been simply unbeatable. They've got Kante as well. I mean, that's a decent side. No wonder they're challenging for top four. Here's Kante on the attack now. Looks for David Neres in behind to Kante. Oh, I went sliding in. A big mistake there for me. But David De Gea saved us there. Unbelievable. We were talking about a potential save of the season award. Well... That's going to be right up there for contention because that is unbelievable from De Gea. How has he kept that one out? I thought I was going to concede. I was going sliding in with everyone. But somehow De Gea has saved us there. And Golo Kante has missed a big chance for his club. It's now Chelsea though with a corner. The header from Pulisic is decent but thankfully not on target. Lampard must be furious man. His team has missed a couple of great chances in these early moments. Neres yet again looks for Williams who shoots and David De Gea who's made another save. He's had a lot of work to do so far. Lampard's Chelsea is going at it from minute one. Problems here for us. Marquinhos goes in with a brilliant challenge and wow that is just I don't know what to say man. How is our defense so good at times like Marquinhos read that one so well and we get the ball away with these problems here for us as Neres is in behind again. It's been all Chelsea so far. We're just hanging on at the moment, which is not, not that good of a... Now Rashford on the turn. Does really well. Finds Bruno. Big chance for him. Tries to shoot. But that's a fabulous challenge from their number two. I think it was Rudiger. Our first real opportunity. And Chelsea dealt with it well. Goes to Bruno Fernandes. We know he's got a cracking shot and he's in great form lately. Rashford tries to shoot. Gets the shot off, but... Hepa with a solid save. Goes inside to Bruno Fernandes. This is looking nice. Bruno to open up some space. Bruno Fernandes goes for goal. Kepa makes a good save there. 
and the Chelsea get it away. Chelsea started this game off real strong, but slowly we're growing into it. We're getting opportunities. Hopefully very soon we can take them. Rashford on the turn against Rudiger does brilliantly. Still Marcus Rashford on that left foot goes for goal and bamboozles Kepa. I'm pretty sure that would be called offside in real life because Bruno was kind of, you know, obstructing Kepa's way or field of view. But it's FIFA and I'll take it. Rashford scores yet again for Manchester United. This time with his left foot. He spun Rudiger there brilliantly and then got past his man and a lovely finish. Yeah, that, that goal wouldn't stand in real life because Bruno was literally obstructing Kepa's view and didn't let him dive. Yo, Bruno deserves an assist for that goal. I mean, how is that standing? Anyways, I'll take it. 1-0 Man United. Anthony Martial looks for Marcus Rashford. Back inside to Martial, it's brilliant. We could be scoring another goal in this one. Huge save from Kepa there. Could have easily been 2-0 Man United. Halftime against Chelsea, it's been an intense game. Chelsea started off real strong. They were probably the better side in the first 20-25 minutes. But then we responded, we were creating more chances. And ultimately, we took our opportunity with Rashford. Let's keep pushing in the second half. A win here could be monumental for our Champions League hopes. Problems as Neres is getting through, but Marquinhos read that one so well. I mean, this signing has been literally perfect for us. He's just controlling games from the back, not letting anything get in behind him. And honestly, I'm loving using our back line right now. Even Maguire seems to be playing better now, now that he's got like a proper good defender alongside him. We've given Chelsea a free kick from a good spot in Yaki Williams though. Putting this one far post, it's actually going to work. Big save from David De Gea. Our defence got caught there a bit. And a big chance for N'Golo Kante who unleashes. And that is yet another fabulous save from David De Gea. Looks back for Marcus Rashford. It's good build-up play from the two of them. Back to Martial. Inside now to Bruno. Can we hit them on the counter-attack? Bruno Fernandes doing really well. On the right foot has to be a goal. And no, it's cleared away. That is harsh. Now Rashford though tries to turn and shoot. And Chelsea get away with it. I was being too cheeky there with Bruno. Should have just gone for the shot when I could. Pulisic using his pace against McDominay. This, this is not ideal. This is not ideal. McDominay just can't catch him. Cross comes in. To at that one. This is not good at all. This is not good at all. Reese James down the left flank. What's going on here? Still Reese James though. Gets past Marquinhos. And that's a lovely challenge. Does not even allow crosses to come in, man. Marquinhos has had a fantastic game. Full time and we hold on to this win. Manchester United won at Chelsea nil. The amount of clean sheets we've been getting ever since we signed Marquinhos, it's just been incredible. I'm just hoping this can continue. Another solid defensive display and most importantly, we scored and we get the win at Stamford Bridge. This is huge. How satisfied are you with Awar? He deserves all the praise, especially to replace a player like Pogba. He's done it wonderfully. Really enjoyed using him so far in this episode. Paul Pogba has recovered from his injury, which is fantastic. Now, I'm not going to lie, we didn't really miss him. Awar was that good, but it's always nice to have your best players back and fully fit. So, I'm happy that he's back. So, Manchester United, third in the Premier League and convincingly. Three points above Spurs, four points above Chelsea. We're in a fantastic spot to finish in a top four position. Let's just hope we can keep going. Now, the title race, though, I guess is over. City are 10 points clear of us. I mean, they're going to fight it out with Liverpool, but our chances of winning the league aren't that high. But hopefully we can finish third in the league. That'd be a great spot to, you know, build from. Also, at the moment, Marcus Rashford is the top scorer in the Premier League with 19 goals and 24. One above Harry Kane, one above Mane as well. Imagine if he wins the Golden Boot. That'd be crazy. For now, though, time to turn our attentions to the BTEC Champions League, also known as the Europa League. I need to stop saying that. I'll just offend way too many people. Anyways, Man United versus Basel. We play them away, a trip to Switzerland. Switzerland. Let's go there, get a good result in the first leg. The round of 32 in the Europa League is a two-legged affair, which means in the first leg we can afford to go with like a second team and just get a good result or hope for the best. And if things don't go our way, we can of course go full strength at Old Trafford in the return leg. So that's exactly what I'm doing in this first leg. I'm starting the likes of Mason Greenwood, giving them some game time in the Europa League. Dan James starts as well, Awar in the lineup, Grealish starts. Giving Sancho some game time on the left side as well because I feel like he's kind of been in bad form. So let's hope he can regain that in this one. By its one's a base start, Dalot, Brandon Williams, Dean Henderson. So all the youngsters are in the lineup. Let's see how they perform against Basel. This is a knockout Europa League game. So on the pitch, we'll take it seriously. Goes out wide for Dan James. Would love to see him pick up an assist here. Dan James goes for Grealish, shoots, and that's blocked off by Basel. 
So far, the attack is looking good. Would love to have or would love to see the youngsters get the job done against a team like Basel. Is Dan James looking to link up with maybe Awa? Does so successfully. Now we release Dan James and here go Manchester United. Chance to make it 1-0. Cut back to Awa. Big chance for him. A clearance from the goal line. I cannot believe it. That was brilliant work between Awa and Dan James. Oh, we've got Bai now on the counter-attack. Gonna, of course, play this one for... I wanted to play that to Dan James, but it doesn't matter. It's gone to Mason Greenwood. Still Greenwood here on the left foot now. Chance for him to score. He hits it straight at the keeper. That's a big chance wasted again. Grealish looks for Sancho. Finally a chance for maybe to break through this Basel defence. Go on, Sancho. Good dribbling from him. Looks for Grealish. Has to be a goal. How is that blocked, man? Those are the kind of chances we've got to do better with. I mean, in the final third in this game, we've been so bad. Here's Grealish. Dan James in acres of space. This is where he can cause a lot of problems. Goes for the cutback for Grealish. How is that not a goal? Jack Grealish, come on, man. That should be a goal every single day of the week. A big chance wasted again. Mason Greenwood looks for Jack Grealish. This, this is looking much better from us. Although Jack Grealish goes down a bad challenge there from the Basel defender. Awar is the best free kick taker in the team at the moment. I'm not too sure what to do with this one. In fact, I've completely blown it. It's just the worst free kick ever. Oh, this looks nice. This looks lovely. Mason Greenwood did so well. Then now it's Sancho's time to shine. And Jaden Sancho scores in the 85th minute. Mason Greenwood deserves so much credit for that assist but also gotta say Sancho was calm and composed in the box there and a lovely finish there from him an important away goal for us in the tie look at that for a pass from Mason Greenwood Sancho took it in his stride really well and it's a lovely finish from the young Englishman as Manchester United take the lead late on in this one and that's full time we're going to Old Trafford with a 1-0 advantage from this first leg which is absolutely perfect I guess even in that second leg I'm going to, you know, stay confident with the youngsters and play them. They've done a really good job here. Basel didn't really pose much of a threat. Attacking-wise, we huffed and puffed, but ultimately, we got the job done. So finally, our youth scout is bringing us some top-tier players. Harvey Bell, 73 to 94 potential. He could be the real deal, man. He could absolutely be the real deal because his valuation is about 350,000, which is pretty good. So we're going to sign him up. I'm not too convinced with Charles Murphy just yet, but we'll keep him here. Connor Bennett as well, not too sure about it. We'll keep him there, but the rest of the two are pretty average, so we're going to reject them. So Harvey Bell is already 59 rated, which is nice to see. 73 to 94 potential, good stats all round. I'm liking the look of him. Also, I've got to say, I'm not too convinced with Harrison Thomas. He's only 50 rated and his potential is between 81 and 91, so I'm going to release him. But I'm going to definitely keep Lewis Davies and, of course, Harvey Bell in the academy for now. So, next episode, we continue with more Premier League action. We wrap up the round of 32 of the Europa League, hopefully qualifying for the next round. And most importantly, we've got the Carabao Cup final, a chance to win a trophy, our first trophy of the series. And it's against Liverpool, so stakes are high and it's going to be one hell of a game against them. This was actually a pretty big episode for our season goals as Bruno Fernandes made huge strides. He's now on 13 assists for the season. Rashford's on 22 goals, so I reckon we should be able to get these two objectives done soon. Before we wrap up the episode, time for you guys to make your vote count and vote for the Player of the Episode award. As always, a couple of nominees. The first one being Bruno Fernandes. I thought he had a pretty good episode. Four assists, in fact. I mean, it's more than a pretty good episode. It was fantastic from him. He was also scoring goals, and that's why he's been nominated. The second nominee is going to be Marquinhos. And defensively, the guy was just so, so good. A couple of clean sheets, let nothing pass them. Have to give him a nomination, so it's between Marquinhos and Bruno. Click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. And with that, we've wrapped up another episode. It was a big one today. We wrapped up the transfer window. Paul Pogba confirms to stay as a Man United player. We got done with a big game against Chelsea and came out on top. So a lot happened in this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Next episode is going to be crazy with that cup final. So if you're enjoying the series, keep the support coming in. Drop a like in the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you guys next time.